Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Annie and today I am making a part two of translated books that I want to read or translated books on my radar. So sit back, relax and enjoy. I have a ton of variety here. I have books translated from Spanish, from Finnish, um, just a whole bunch of variety, Korean. Um, it's going to be fun. So let's go. So first we have a short story collection, which is Shoko Smile by Choi and Young, translated by Song Ryu. Um, yeah, I am very, very interested in this. First of all, the cover is really cute. Um, this is supposedly best-selling and it's also a debut collection, so that's very interesting. Um, it says, in this crisp, unembellished prose, Trae and Young paints intimate portraits of the lives of young women in South Korea, balancing the personal with the political. So in the title story, Shogo Smile, a fraught friendship between an exchange student and her host sister follows them from adolescence to adulthood. And it's been compared to kind of the writing style of Sally Rooney and Banana Yoshimoto. Um, I really like Banana Yoshimoto. I have not read Sally Rooney, but safe to say I am super interested in this one. And then we're switching from Korean to Arabic with Frankenstein in Baghdad by Ahmed Sadawi. Sadawi? Sorry. Um, it says, from the rubble-strewn streets of U.S.-occupied Baghdad, Hadi, a scavenger and an oddball fixture at a local cafe, collects human body parts and stitches them together to create a corpse. His goal is for the government to recognize the parts as people and do, and to give them a proper burial. But when the corpse goes missing, a wave of eerie murders sweeps the city, and reports stream in of a horrendous-looking criminal who cannot be killed. So yes, um, I love Frankenstein, of course, and this just sounds amazing. Um, it's something that I've seen kind of going around, um, and yeah, I, I want to read it. Okay, so now we have a book translated from Finnish, which is The Union of Synchronized Swimmers, and this is about um, six girls in an unnamed Soviet state. So again, I'm really interested in Soviet history. Um, so at first they meet each day to swim and play and soon though the game becomes something more serious and they start to really practice and really um, force themselves to overdo it um, and then they find themselves representing their country as synchronized swimmers in the Olympics and they seize that chance to escape and begin new lives. So they scatter across the globe and live in freedom but they can't forget what they left behind. And that just sounds so fascinating. Um, I, as you may know, am very fascinated by Soviet history, um, especially the sports aspect. So I would love to read this. This sounds right up my alley. Okay, so next we have another Korean book, which is The Old Woman with the Knife, which I am really excited about. Um, it is about this 65-year-old female assassin who faces an unexpected threat in the twilight of her career and has to kind of do one last job. Um, it sounds awesome. She sounds like she kind of has a really big attitude. Um, yeah, so it just it sounds really good. Um, it kind of reminds me of Killers of a Certain Age, except this, I don't know, it sounds better to me. I don't know, I want to read it. And it's a really big bestseller, so I'm very excited about it. And then we have another post-communist novel. This is called Crossing, and it's set in Albania, but it's by a Finnish author, so I believe it is translated from Finnish. Um, this is set in post-communist Albania with inseparable friends Bujar and Agim, which I hope I'm pronouncing correctly. Um, Bujar is struggling to come to terms with the loss of his father, Agim facing dangerous realizations about his sexuality. Um, when shame, guilt, and the runes of authoritarianism push them to leave everything behind and flee to Italy, the unfamiliar life of an immigrant and asylum seeker sets Bujar on a path of reinvention. He follows an impulse to remake himself as a man or woman of infinite nationalities and pasts. The burning desire to be seen and heard spurring a desperate search for a different existence. But Bujar's quest for identity and belonging is haunted by the mystery of what happened to Agim, his one true beloved who somehow got lost along the way. So yes, this is an LGBT story as well. So I, I just love the sound of this. I really, really want to read this. 
And then we have another LGBT story. This one is translated from Spanish, which is Jawbone. And this follows Fernanda and Annalise, who are so close, they're practically sisters. So how does Fernanda end up bound on the floor of a deserted cabin held hostage by one of her teachers and estranged from Annalise? Very interesting. Um, yeah, the synopsis sounds a little bit confusing. It sounds a little bit like a fever dream. Um, apparently it's very ominous and told from different points of views and very, very scary. <laughs> um, the cover is stunning. I love the design of this cover. Um, it's also pretty short, which is interesting. Um, I am really hoping to read this soon. I don't know exactly the LGBT representation in this book, but I'm hoping it's sapphic, so I am really excited about this. I want to read more translated horror, definitely. Okay, so the last book on this list is Witches by Brenda Lozano, which is also translated from Spanish. This is the beguiling story of a young journalist whose investigation of a murder leads her to the most legendary healer in all of Mexico. So Paloma is dead, but before she was murdered, before she was even Paloma, she was a traditional healer named Gaspar. Before she was murdered, she taught her cousin the secrets of the ceremonies known as Veladas and about the language and the book capitalized, that unlock their secrets. Sent to report on Paloma's murder, Zoe meets Feliciana in the mountain village. There, the two women's lives twist around each other, and Feliciana tells Zoe the story of her struggle to become an accepted healer in her community, and Zoe begins to understand the hidden history of her own experience as a woman finding her way in a hostile environment shaped by and for men. Sounds fascinating. This cover is sick. I love the bird head. Like, that's really awesome. Um, yeah, so I am super excited about this one. Very, very interesting stuff. So thank you so much for watching. Sorry about the lighting in this video. The sun keeps going in and out, but thank you so much. I am so excited to read these books. I have so many more translated books that I could have talked about, but these are the ones that I just keep thinking about that I really want to read really soon. So if you have read any of these books, let me know your thoughts. And if you have any recommendations for more translated books to add to my TBR, definitely let me know in the comments down below. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe to my channel for more bookish videos, and I'll see you next time. Bye!